Hey y'all, welcome back. Tonight's homework is all about solving quadratic inequalities. And so we're going to typically use the graph to do that. We don't necessarily need a super detailed graph. Uh, just a rough sketch is fine. This is already more detailed than we really need. Uh, but let's look at A. It says solve f of x is greater than 0. So this is asking for where the value of the function is greater than 0 or positive. And we can see that the function is above the x-axis uh, here. Let me make this a little bit more transparent for you. But right here and right here. Right, we can see it's clearly above the x-axis. That's what it's asking for. When is it greater than zero? And so we're going to say there's two um, uh, intervals here. Both x is less uh, than, what would that be, negative six. And then we'll say or x is greater than five. Now this is how you would write it using inequalities. Uh, you might also write this using set notation. There we go. So x is an element of the set, and then there'll be two conjoined sets here. There'll be negative infinity to negative 6. Union, and so we'll use this u-looking symbol, and then from 5 to infinity. So you could write it either way here. Um, I typically will write it using set notation. I just kind of like that better. Um, but this one's just as fine. Okay, you can, you can write it like this too. For part B, it says solve for when f of x is less than or equal to 0. So in this case, we're looking for where the graph is either at 0 or below it. So we can see it's going to be this section right here, including the, at the intercepts. And so we want to say that x could be in between negative 6 and 5, and that would be inclusive. So negative 6 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. If we write that as, if we write that using set notation, we would say x is an element of the set, um, and then from negative six to five, and we're actually going to use brackets here because we want to include those endpoints. So once again, either one of these two um, representations is perfectly fine. Just make sure you're comfortable reading and interpreting both of them. Number two, part A says, when is f of x greater than or equal to zero? So that's gonna be where the graph is above or on the x-axis. You can see that's gonna be this section right up here. All of this part of the parabola is above the x-axis. We wanna include the zeros as well. So the way we're gonna write our solution set is gonna be, x is in between and including negative 6 and 5 halves. And I'm pulling those straight from the x-intercepts. You could also write this using set notation, just like the other ones that we did before. x is an element of the set. And we would use close, we would use brackets because we do want to include the endpoints. So we'd say negative 6, comma 5 halves. Again, these are just two different ways of writing the same thing. You don't necessarily need both of them. Um, just pick the one you like better. Part B says, when is f of x less than zero? We can see that on the graph as well. That's gonna be below the x-axis. So down here and down here. So we have two sets of values. One where x is less than negative six, and one where x is greater than five halves. So I'll go ahead and write that. x is gonna be either less than negative six, or x is greater than five halves. It's really just the other part of the number line that's not included in part A. So this is how you would write the compound inequality when you have two of them like that. And here's how you'd write it as a, as a set. X is an element of the set. Wish I had a symbol for that, so we wouldn't have to freehand it. Uh, but we'll do what we can here. X is an element of the set. And then we'll say from negative infinity to negative six, union five halves to infinity and beyond. 
Is there anything beyond infinity? Good question. All right, <laughs> let's go down to number three. Now we actually have to do the solving, okay? So we're gonna approach it basically the same way that we did these two problems. The only difference being they do not give us the graph. So when we wanna do the graph, we don't need it to be this detailed where you know everything's drawn to scale and all that. If you look closely, really the only things that are important here are the x-intercepts and knowing which direction the parabola is opening. Is it opening up or down? So uh, just as a little reminder, if it's opening up like this, this happens whenever the a value is positive. So the leading coefficient um, is greater than zero. So this is where leading coefficient is positive. Now, if it opens down, that's when the a value or the leading coefficient is negative. So we'll just take a look at that. Those are the, really the only two pieces of information you need to be able to answer this. Because we're gonna, just going to uh, construct a, a quick rough sketch of the parabola. And then we should be able to answer our questions after that. So this one's already in factored form. So we can find the x-intercepts pretty easily. Split this up and solve them individually. Either x minus 5 is 0 or x plus 2 is 0. So that means we have x-intercepts at x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. Again, right here, we're just finding the x-intercepts of the graph. We're not actually solving anything yet. Okay, maybe I'll make a note that we are just finding the x-intercepts. So first, find the x-intercepts. Then find the leading term. And really all we care about on the leading term is if it's positive or negative. That way we know if it opens up or down. Um, x times x here is x squared. Okay, x squared has a positive leading coefficient. It's just one. And so um, in this case, we know that the parabola will open up. Now quite frequently, if it's set up like this, and you can do this algebra in your head, you don't really need to write out all these notes. I'm just trying to explain how I'm gonna come up with this sketch. Okay, so we've got our x-intercepts at negative two and five. It's opening up, so that means our parabola is gonna do something like this, okay? Now here we wanna know where is it greater than or equal to zero? So we can find where it's greater than or equal to zero above the x-axis, which we have here. That's gonna be this section right here, and including the zero, so we'll make sure to include that, and this piece here. This is gonna be one of those compound inequalities like we had um, over here in 2b. So my solution set is gonna be x is less than or equal to negative two, or x is greater than 5. Uh, greater than or equal to 5. So here's our solution set right there. There's our answer. And then um, we can also write it as a set. I think I, I might just borrow what I have over here. So I'm going to retype the whole thing. And this should go from negative infinity to negative 2. Here we're actually going to use brackets because it is saying that we want to include the 0. And then from 5 to infinity. All right, there's your answer to number 3. Number 4 will be solved similarly. Uh, I'll try to move through it a little faster than I did this one, um, just so you can kind of see that you don't necessarily need to write all this stuff out. I just wanted to at least give you one problem where I'm really breaking down what everything is. So here, let's see if we can't just come up with the x-intercepts and the, and the direction that the parabola opens um, just right away. So the x-intercepts, this is already in factored form, so uh, setting those both equal to zero and solving would yield um, x equals negative three and x equals negative seven. <clears throat> 
finally, the, uh, the leading term here is going to be exactly the same as the last one. x times x is x squared. Uh, so that means the parabola opens up, just like this one, uh, just like number three. All right, so now we're going to create our little sketch, and we should be able to answer our question. So here is the x-axis, the number line that we're using. We've got x-intercepts at negative 3 and negative 7. Here's negative 7. Here's negative 3. The parabola is going to open up. Oh, let's try to go through those x-intercepts. Something like that. And we want to know when is this less than 0. So when is it below the x-axis? And that's going to be down here. All right, so now we can go ahead and write our solution set here. X is going to be in between, not including, uh, negative 7 and 3. Negative 7, negative 3, sorry. So those will be exclusive. And then um, as a set, we'll say X is an element of the set. And then, um, let's see here, ne uh, negative 7 to negative 3. Okay. I think from here on out, I'm, I'm, I will just give you one of the two representations, probably not both. Uh, I just wanted to give you plenty of examples so you can kind of see how both of them work. Um, but I think in the next few, I will just give probably just the, uh, this kind, the set notation. All right, here we go. So now we're actually going to have to do some solving to figure out what those x-intercepts are. Okay, so over here, uh, the factoring was already done for you. But starting with number five, we're going to have to start um, factoring if we can. We've got, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 35 and add up to negative 2. And so that would be negative 7 and 5. So we can factor this as x minus 7 times x plus 5. And now we can go ahead and start our, well, maybe we'll make a little note here what our x-intercepts are. So our x-intercepts. will be at positive 7 and negative 5. And then our parabola, since x times x is x squared, that's going to have a positive leading coefficient, so the parabola opens up. So here's our quick little sketch here, negative 5 and 7, and it's going to go down and come through like this. Okay, so what we're interested in is when is this greater than 0? So that's going to happen above the x-axis here. But like, no. I'm trying to get that transparency on. There we go. Here and here. So my solution here will be x. Gosh, I really wish I had that element of a set symbol, but that's okay. I might just copy and paste from here on out. X is an element of the set. Negative infinity to negative 5. Exclusive, because we um, don't have the equal to here. Union. 7 to infinity. Now, if you like the, uh, the inequality notation, you're more than welcome to keep using that. Uh, but I'm just going to stick with the set notation from here on out. Hopefully, you've seen enough examples 
up here to where you can you know how to write it like that as well number six we need to factor this as well two numbers that multiply to give me negative eight and add up to negative six would be negative four. Oh no 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 wait a minute negative uh is this not factorable negative eight and negative six uh well, we got four and two and we got eight and one so yeah this one's not factorable so we're gonna have to use the quadratic formula here okay so um to find the x-intercepts we need to do negative b so be negative negative six positive six plus or minus square root of b squared so be 36 minus 4ac 4 times 1 times negative 8 would be negative uh, would be 32 so plus 32 all over 2 times a which would be 1 so just 2 all right so 36 plus 32 is going to be 68 which yeah that is not fact uh, that's not going to be a rational number but that's okay um in fact, you can just leave it like these. These are going to be your x-intercepts. X-intercepts. Okay. Um, we can see the leading coefficient here is 1, so it is going to open up. And let's go ahead and draw our number line. Now, 6 plus and 6 minus, we're going to give us two different numbers here. And um, so I'll just plot both of these on the actual number line. One for the minus should be the one that's smaller. And the one with plus should be a little bigger. And my line just disappeared. Not sure what happened there. I think we could draw another one. So, yeah, I'll put this number here and this number here. Parabola is going to open up. And we're interested to see when is it less than or equal to zero. That's going to happen down here. And we do want to include the zeros. So we'll put brackets around um, uh, those numbers. So yeah, we've got x is an element of the set. And then we'll have bracket, because we do want to include the zero. And then whatever number this is, comma, whatever number this is. You could put these in the, in the um, calculator if you want an estimate, if you want like a decimal approximation. But it's not really necessary. You can just leave it like this so you don't have to do that. All right. These are just two numbers, though. It's basically just saying that solutions are going to be in between this number and this number. Um, you know, 64 is going to be, the square root of 64 is 8, so it's going to be a little bit more than 8. This would be like negative 1-ish, and this would be like, I don't know, 8 plus 6, 14, it would be around 7. So, you know, it's around just kind of eyeballing it, negative 1 to 7-ish, okay? But you could just leave it in this exact form. Number 7. Now, this one is not, does not have the zero isolated. We haven't encountered this yet, but you do need to make sure to get that zero on the right-hand side. So m squared plus 5m minus 14 is less than or equal to zero. So now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 14 and add up to 5. And those will be 7 and negative 2. So this can be factored as 7, uh, m plus 7 times m minus 2. Now we can identify our x-intercepts and the direction the parabola should be opening, which is going to be up. x-intercepts are going to be at x equals negative 7 and x equals positive 2. And the parabola opens up. because our leading coefficient is positive. Now we can draw a number line, throw down the negative 7 and the 2. The 
Here's my parabola. And here we're looking for where it's greater than or equal to zero. That's gonna be here and here, and including the zeros. So it'll be an answer kind of like this. So our solution set, I'll just copy and paste this and replace the numbers. Uh, oh, didn't, didn't grab the X for some reason. It's gonna be from negative infinity. Uh, it deleted my graph too, what the? Okay. Um, well, it's good. here's your solution set. I guess I could redraw this, that's kind of annoying. Okay. A little sloppier on the second time around, but that's fine. So anyway, here's your solution set from negative infinity to negative seven and two to infinity. Number eight, uh, we gotta move a lot of stuff over here because we do need that zero on the right hand side. So I'm gonna subtract Q and subtract 15 to make that happen. Now I can factor. Ooh, okay, so here we've got a leading coefficient that's not one, so we can't do the, sh the sort of cheat factoring that we've been doing before. Here I'm gonna do the little Xbox method that we learned in our factoring unit. So we're finding two numbers that multiply to give me negative 30, that's A times C, and add up to negative one. What would those be? Uh, be negative six, and five. So what these two numbers are going to do is help me complete this box method, this reverse box method, by giving me the two linear terms. So I've got this 2q squared It's going to go here. The negative 15 go down here. Oh. And then we've got negative 6x and 5x, or I guess q. All right, this is pretty sloppy here. Uh, just trying to freehand with the mouse. Bear with me. OK, so now to find our factors, we're going to find the GCF out of each column in each row. Um, so for the columns, uh, here we've got a GCF of 2q. and in the second column, my GCF is 5. So 2q plus 5 is going to be one of my factors. And the other one, um, let's see here. So my GCF of this row is going to be q. And the GCF of this row is going to be negative 3. So q minus 3. So here I can now identify what my x-intercepts are. I'm going to do a little bit of work in my head here. So if I set 2q plus 5 equal to 0, that's going to give me, I'm going to subtract 5, divide by 2. That's going to be negative 5 over 2, which is negative like uh, 2.5. And oops, I guess these are technically q intercepts. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then and then three. I guess I should go back and fix all the letters on the previous ones. I'll do that later. Uh, okay, so these are my x-intercepts. Now I can draw my line. So this is a negative 2.5 and three. <clears throat> My parabola is going to open up here because of the leading coefficient is positive. There's my sketch. And I'm looking for where the, um, uh, where is the function above or on the x-axis because it's greater than or equal to zero. So that's going to be here and here. Yeah, I just realized some of these problems are not. Uh oh, what just happened here?
Oh, Cammy, you're a little wonky today. It's all right. There we go. Okay, so first things first, this is actually really should be Q. And that's going to be in between negative infinity and negative five halves and from three to infinity. So I think I might just take a second here to fix my variables in the last couple problems. Um, you can skip this part if, you, if you'd like to just kind of go on to the next problem. But I'm going to change this x right here to an m. Um, well, I guess I should change these too, huh? These should be m intercepts. Uh, here we've got n, uh, but I think, so yeah, we need to change this to n, and this is x, so we're good there. Were there any other ones? I think the rest were x, yeah. Okay, just got to be a little bit more careful on, on, on writing my answers there. Uh, so we got 7, we got 8, let's go on to number 9, looks like we got two problems left. So number 9, I think what I'll do here is move this x squared over the left hand side. So x squared... Uh, or negative x squared, plus 3x plus 4, greater than or equal to 0. And factoring is always easier when your leading term's positive. So what I can do is just multiply everything by negative 1 here, uh, just to make it go a little smoother. So x squared minus 3x minus 4. And recall that whenever you multiply anything by negative, any inequality, you do have to flip that inequality symbol, so this should be less than or equal to 0. We're going to have to do something similar to that to number 10, too. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and factor this. Two numbers that multiply to give me negative 4 and add up to negative 3 would be negative 4 and 1. So x minus 4, x plus 1. And let's draw the, the good old-fashioned number line here. All right, so you can see that our x-intercepts are going to be at negative 1 and 4. Parabola is going to open up because we did divide this by negative 1. So we want to use the most recent quadratic we have here. So this is going to open up. All right. And then, uh, yeah, so what we're looking for this is less than or equal to 0 and including the zeros. So my solution set is going to be x is an element of the set, and then every number between negative 1 and 0. And we're going to include negative 1 and, I'm sorry, negative 1 and 4, not 0. So x is an element of the set from negative 1 to 0 inclusive. Number 10, our last one. First I'll add 10 to both sides. Then, to make this a little easier, I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1, so that leading coefficient becomes positive. Got to flip the inequality symbol, like in number 9. To factor this, we need to find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 10, add up to negative 3. Uh-oh. Hold on. 10 and 1 is not going to work. Oh, 5 and 2. Yeah. So, um, negative 5 and positive 2. Okay, so let's get to work with our number line. We can see that we've got x-intercepts at positive 5 and negative 2, so I'll label those. It's not a very straight x-axis, but that's fine. Um, uh, it is going to open up. Kind of forcing it to open up when we multiply that by negative 1. And then, so where is it greater than 0? We can see it's greater than 0, less than negative 2, and greater than 5. Our answer should look something like this, which is why I'm just going to copy and paste it. So x is an element of set from negative infinity to negative 2, exclusive and from 5 to infinity. 
And that about wraps it up for tonight's homework. As always, please let me know if you have any questions, if you need any help trying to understand how to do any of these. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching, and you all have a great day.